when I get to an open home, what is my best practice? Like whether I want to buy it, whether I, I'm just looking, like what what should I do? Like you obviously you're putting your name down to um, say like, yep, I'm interested in this. But yeah, what are the right questions to ask to kind of put yourself in a good space to um, win the property, I guess, or just, you know, make an impression? Going one, going quiet, no. All right, guys, welcome back to The Property Pod, your weekly engagement into real estate here in the Hobart Marketplace. I'm your host, Aaron Horn, and it gives me great pleasure to be joined, as always, by our team at the desk, Patrick Berry and John McGregor, real estate agents here at 414. And it always feels good to be here weekly. Oh, that's it. Three in a row. (laughs) (laughs) It feels like we're back to normal, John. (laughs) Boys, we're on a roll now. Everything is fine. We're cruising. We're rolling through. Look, speed humps at the start of the year. It's almost the middle of the year. And we finally worked our stuff out. Actually, today, day of recording, is the shortest day of the year. Oh, really? Winter solace. Oh, it was um, nude swim this morning. That's I'm why you're a bit late getting in, John. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Had to spend extra time in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so look, we've uh, yeah slowly but surely mad our way back into the studio. Um, had some wonderful guests um, coming through earlier in the year. We're going to ramp it up for the future and bring um yeah heaps more excitement for the rest of the year oh i like where you're going as i'm look i'm i'm pumped i'm in i'm in the zone now we've just moved out into our bunker if you want to um kind of let everybody know about our side office yeah, that we've, that's uh, such cool. that we've put in well yeah well we're growing so fast we've gone and bought a 40 foot shipping container and converted it into a bunker mm. as it's, we're naming it we're naming it the bunker it's kind of cool it's um become the media house bunker so yeah the crew that we're kind of we were calling ourselves the cupboard crew for a little while there. We were put in the cupboard and said, you guys be good little boys over there and make sure you make all our stuff look good. We're, uh, yeah, we're, we've put a, the bunker in the in the Such back, in the car park. Such an name for it too because, <laughs> you know, the, the, the shipping container sprayed, was it graph or like a black? Is yep. it just straight black? Yeah, and then, I've, I mean, um, hope we'll love it. We have to put po- you know, pictures of it because then on the back wall you've got the um, – the, 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 the picture of uh, Mickey Mouse and all that kind of stuff. Like yeah, so we back. graffitied the inside of it is what John's trying to describe yeah, everyone. Yeah, that <laughs> that's, all, that's all the only word I need. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've set up our first green screen studio yeah. in there as well. So oh, look out, we'll be presenting from Hawaii next week. Yeah, look, the crazy <laughs> thing was I said to Pat, I said, oh, look, if we're doing this and we've got this meeting room, how cool would it be to – and I kind of said it just as an off-the-cuff, I'll throw it away and – We'll just have a little giggle about having a green screen put in. Yeah. Next thing I know, Paul, his old man's coming up like, what colour green do we need for the green screen? And I was just like, all right. You know how we work, Aaron. I do know how we work. You have to half sniff an idea (laughs) and it's happening. Or or maybe maybe as well when he was saying, you know, what colour is a green screen? He's being really meta. So he was trying to, you know, subvert what you were... (laughs) 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 Abort, abort. (laughs) Yeah, I had a concept in my head, but no, it, just, it was gone the second I started speaking. Have you guys heard of this movie called The Godfather? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. oh, that was so yeah. good, John. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the, the, morning, wow. the, the morning, the first question to the boys was, um, have you heard of the movie The Rock? <laughs> <laughs> With Sean Connery. Oh, like God. we've never heard of this movie before. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I still think that having him as Bond is still the best idea I've heard in ages. It just added at least another 50% of enjoyment on that film. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's mm. that's the bunker. That's, um, that's the Yeah, bunker. the green screen is um, is something that I just jokingly <laughs> reference and now I've got to find a way to use. So. <laughs> Damn straight, because that chroma green paint, which apparently is a real paint, is special order. So now we actually have to use it. Well, I, think no. I, just, I just want to be in a scene with Sean Connery. Now we can make that happen. <laughs> Got you covered. Is yeah. is he passed away? I think he's. <laughs> yeah, but he was a Highlander, so he might um live forever. Oh, he's epic. The dude, just the screen presence, loved it. This is where this is the property pot after all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real battle this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to get back on track. Yeah, we're going to okay. talk some serious okay. real estate. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I've got the green screen. I've got to use it. Um, and yeah, the the space out there is amazing. So what you can kind of turn a foot forty foot shipping container into is um yeah is very very impressive and yeah shout out to the 414 property co team for yeah believing or just seeing an idea yeah. and making it happen it's awesome we like so seeing an idea and making it happen what i wanted to cover off this bad segue but i'm just going to run with it anyway was um i was <laughs> I like seeing it. i'm getting there i've got it i've got it in my head um i was driving on the weekend and i was i went to Taroos at district b and i was getting coffee and i don't know if i don't go out 
at the right time on a Saturday morning. Mm. But the amount of open home signs I saw mm. on my like little journey, I was like, is there an influx of open homes that are going on at the moment? Like, I I know we've been talking about low stock on the market, and that's kind of being a big thing. Simon mentioned it before, but like I was every corner, I was seeing open home signs. Like, is there are they pumping? Are they going off? What's happening? I think open homes are back. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I suppose even though the, the, the listings are low, a lot of the properties are staying on that little bit longer. So all of a sudden, rather than, you know, come and gone, come and gone, come and gone, yep. they're, they're doing this, you know, second and third um, open homes right as new properties are coming on, you know, overlaying the other. So you're just seeing a lot more boards um, out on the street. Yeah, so days on market, what, six months, 12 months ago would have been three to seven days three, tops. Seven, yeah, <laughs> across the board. So it's really hard to get an open home up and running when you've got a maximum time frame of sort of seven days. Yeah, absolutely. So we tend to find that, um, you know, that's why there wasn't a huge amount. And if they mm. were, they were one and done. So okay. open home happened on Saturday morning. By Saturday afternoon, the property was sold, probably with multiple offers and huge amount of interest. And quite frankly, it's a horrible experience for buyers because yeah. they had so many people just walking through their home. You cannot sit there and enjoy it or get the mm. real understanding of it. Um, just the intensity of the pressure was so different than the experience they can have by visiting open homes now. Yeah, now mm. days on market, what, probably sitting around 20 to 30 days, I would have thought, John? Yeah, I'd say so. But that's a normal market for Hobart. Yeah. Like, historically, it's always been at least a month. Yeah. You'd expect to say with your clients, look, um, within 30 days, we're going to find a contract for you. Um, you know, if not, you know, you would be expecting a price adjustment because it just wasn't, you know, in the market. Yep. Um, which is fine. You know, the, the, this sort of environment where you can spend more time with clients is actually a much more pleasant way to work, in my experience, because you're, you know, establishing relationships over a longer period of time. So I think what it boils down to, to answer your question, why you see more boards, Aaron, and that was mm. a ticky little hand. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all right. I appreciate that. It was yeah. fabulous. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to go to your open homes. <laughs> <laughs> is that... Most open homes now are probably properties are getting two open homes. I would have thought before yep. we end up with a contract, sure. potentially there was only one. So yep. you are probably seeing double the amount of open home boards out than what you potentially saw previously. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, so it was just it, like the way you guys have described that's kind of yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like it was kind of yeah, properties were going you know prior to the open home or yeah, one would happen and then you don't really have to run it. like you're talking about like a shotgun wedding basically. Like exactly. walk in, let's get this done. See you later. Whereas at the moment, yeah, there's. You know, the need for two, perhaps. And sometimes you ask for your father-in-law's approval. Well, yes. <laughs> to, to buy the house. So, you know, there's a lot well, of references there that match. Sometimes you need them to go guarantor. So, <laughs> yeah, you never know. Well, and then at least now, um, I mean, the, the idea, you can get a lot more out of an open for inspection than you would have been able to six to 12 months ago. In, in, well, obviously, in Hobart. Yep. Um, and... It, what what with what I mean by that is where before I suppose people were just like just jamming through within five minutes grabbing a contract and hoping that they're going to get a call back in order to submit interest. Um, now you've actually got the capacity to you know have a conversation with the agents that are there, um, and also to then have you know space in rooms where no one is breathing down your neck at the same time. Yeah, more COVID safe approach as well. Yeah, and I, I know like as as very a, much so. as an agent. And I've, Recently, I've been um, acting as a buyer's agent for a friend of mine in uh, interstate and obviously looking for properties for my partner as well at the time. Yeah. Um, I've worn like all the different hats recently. So it's been um, an interesting one to observe, you know, from the uh, when when you're selling it, you can just see um, some people are really, you know, open and in your face. Others are really, you know, try to avoid eye contact at all costs. Um, and I, I just it's. You know, we're thinking about, well, look, actually, if you've got 30 minutes in a house, how can you actually get the most out of that inspection? Well, that's a, that's a good good question. And I think um, a great way to pivot from here is why don't we explore three different sections? Like mm. if you're the vendor, how do, we, how do you make the open home the best experience possible? Yep. If you're the purchaser, what are the advantages for you in an open home? Mm -hmm. And then maybe tenants slash agents, like what's involved if there's a tenant involved in an open home where yeah. they're selling a home. So, you know... Looking from the vendor perspective, why do you think we should have open homes to sell a vendor's property? Well, from experience, it we even when we've had, uh, like, say, a, a volume of inquiry, it ends up being about a third of people actually show up to an open inspection. Yep. That's rough numbers, but it seems to be pretty consistent even in, even in the hotter markets. Mm -hmm. um, what, I have no what we have noticed, though, is that those that would um, not, not even inquire will join at an open home. So by virtue of just having, an, you know, um, an open for inspection those that would otherwise feel too nervous or not 
are 100% engaged in trying to buy a property today are going to visit that open home just out of either curiosity and you may, and you will and may and often find that right person that goes, actually, this just feels amazing. Either they might be looking on behalf of someone or they are looking on behalf of themselves and just by chance, because it was open, they'll buy it. So it helps capture the passive buyer. 100%. Is what you're sort of indicating at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for a vendor as well, I guess, um, you know, having multiple people out of one property inspection or one open home creates that sense of urgency for a potential buyer if they mm-hmm. see multiple buyers there. So mm-hmm. I think um, you've got a better opportunity as well to get a contractor at a faster rate mm-hmm. if you utilise open homes mm-hmm. because you can create that that sense of um, I have to have this, I guess, is the best way to describe yeah. it. And, and, and often it's quite – it's instant feedback too because you mm. may – you know, even if um, no uh, you know offer arrives from that open home, it's still successful if you can grab value fe- valuable feedback. Yeah, for so, sure. So the mm. idea, you could have um, completely missed the mark on price. Um, if no one shows up after two weeks, you know, you've either – like the presentation might be wrong, the market needs to be adjusted, the price might be off. So you're getting feedback even if no one arrives. But if you've got it at multiple people, you can, you know, then ex- you know, ask them the question, look – um, why are they there and what are they intending to spend? Um, and sometimes they'll just give you a straight up, look, I'm not interested in this one, but what would you pay for it at a, at a price? So um, it gives feedback in, you know, if you're not actually getting the results you want, at worst case scenario. Or if you're getting constant feedback like, oh, look, I really like it, except it seems dark in this room or it seems cold in this area or yep. it's it's not hitting these marks. It's like, oh, well, we can actually kind can of fix that. fix that or we can mm. work on that. Or yeah, at least we know now that that's the reason that it kind of keeps hitting like, oh, it stinks downstairs. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that's not as silly as it sounds because we've had properties, absolutely, that haven't sold, taken off the market temporarily, done the adjustments, fixed up those little butts, as we've always talked about, and then boom, it's gone. No he loves them butts. No, he's he a does. butt man. Butt man. He, he's a big he's butt man. A, yeah. Uses those people in his corner to get jobs done. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Wow, he said <laughs> he had all these much. hats on before, oh. and I was just like, man, like how many corners and hats does this guy have? <laughs> <laughs> Got his all his butts happening. <laughs> Bit like, butt. I like those sombrero hats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just I was kind of picturing like when I'm a buyer's agent, I'm wearing like a little um, butler's hat. Or <laughs> <laughs> like, you've got these different ones that you show up in. With I, your I, I like those bow war helmets. Or hats. Oh, yeah. the square, you know. <laughs> all right, we are back off track again, boys. It happened a lot today. But right, moving over to buyer. Mm. If you're a buyer, why is an open home better experience, I guess? Um, in markets like this, if you – Want to just take in a whole waft of properties in a short period of time? Open homes are great for that because you you can go in and out. If you step up, you know, into the house and go, I hate it, you can just walk out. You know, there's, there's, I mean, there's no sense of embarrassment. You don't have to, you know, engage. You haven't taken from- the agent's time by booking a private inspection or wasted the owner's time. You're able to have a quick look through and make a quick decision. Absolutely, absolutely. I think another advantage that comes to purchases as well, not necessarily they go to a home to potentially buy that exact one, mm. but to help educate themselves as to what homes in the area are selling for. Yeah. So it gives yeah. them a better idea of what they should be paying for a property mm. when they find the right one. So if you've only been to one house in Rosetta and you don't look at any others, mm. you don't know how potentially it compares, what they're asking for that versus the other properties, if that's fair market value. Yeah. But if you try to make yourself a little mini expert on the area – then it gives you a lot better understanding of what you should pay for the property and what should be an acceptable offer. Absolutely. And uh, one thing too is we uh, – I've had to encourage buyers in the past to say, look, just come and have a look at this property, even when they've said, no, no, I've, I've Google mapped it, I don't like the area. Well, quite honestly, most of the time they don't actually know what they're talking about. Um, and I've, I've been a victim of that as well. Like you're quick to judge before you've experienced something. Yep. So to actually oh. get yourself out, drive past and walk in – has a completely different feel than what a Google map, you know, can portray. And it comes down to suburbs. Like the amount of times that, you know, we work with buyers and you've probably experienced this, John, they give us a wish list of what they're looking to buy. Then you finally find that wish list property and you ring them up all excited. Oh, I just bought one in Old Beach. I'm like, but you told me you would never look at Old Beach. (laughs) And we had like six in that area we could have showed you. I actually told you to look at them. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Actually, that's the one that I said that you'd love. (laughs) Like, so... I think at least with open homes and it does allow you to, to get a better understanding of different suburbs, what they offer, what's the pros and cons of the area without that, like you described, pressure, I guess. Yeah, and I um, that another thing that I – because it is – we you know, we do buy in that – Buy an emotion, justify with logic later. Yeah. Um, so th- being able to get that feeling of what you are connecting with is an important part of the experience, especially if you're trying to find a very, very special property for yourself. And another thing too, in – um, markets like this where there may not be as many people, um, you do have more time to actually push the agent for questions because mm-hmm. um, every everyone operates differently, but at all open homes, the agent is always going to be on show. And so that's the time to just 
corner them if you can and just, you know, go question after question after question after question because they can't avoid your phone call. You know, like they are there on the spot and they're trying to, you know, present themselves in a, in a good light and the property in a good light. And so that's a really good time if you, you know, have the courage just to start asking the question. Okay, yeah, this is where I wanted to kind of um, move the conversation towards because I was like from the guy on the outside, mm. um, like when I get to an open home, what is my best practice? Like whether I want to buy it, whether I, I'm just looking, like what, what should I do? Like you obviously you're putting your name down to um, say like, yep, I'm interested in this, but – yeah, what are the right questions to ask to kind of put yourself in a good space to um, win the property, I guess, or just, you know, make an impression? Well, if the open home's full and lots of activity there and you absolutely love it, start picking out all the little imperfections to make everyone else aware <laughs> of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> start oh to second guess it. Oh, my God, have you seen God. the terrible carpentry in this? Did you hear about that house two doors down that got robbed last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, like, okay. So maybe... <laughs> drop stories that can't quite be true, proven true or false. <laughs> righto, righto. Okay, don't mind that. I, I, I On a serious note, though. <laughs> I, I've always found it's handy to make sure that you can be remembered. Okay. Um, because there's al- there's always a follow up period. Um, if the, you know, ex- so you guys will come back to the office and be like, "Oh, we've got to call these people we that were there. Call these people Who are we going to call first? Oh, remember that guy that was wearing the funky socks, yes. or the guy with the crazy glasses, or that guy that was asking all the questions? Exactly. Which is funny that you describe it like that because mm. I'll take John arrives at my open home and I'll take down John McGregor phone number yep. email, but then I would normally write a note that describes that person. So mm. I'm like. All right, this is guy with red shoes. Right. Yeah. So that helps me remember. Yeah. So that if he does show interest later, it helps me remember, oh, which one was that guy? That guy was the one that had the red shoes. So John McGregor looks like Sean Connery. Yeah. Mm. That's it. And oh, I think um, I'll start to put on an accent as well. The guy, <laughs> and then when you call up, it's like, this isn't who I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, getting noticed is important because, look, if you don't say anything to us and you walk through really quiet, you don't really interact with us and you leave and inside you love that to death and we don't realise that, mm. we then get what we believe is an amazing offer and the owner expresses that, yep, they're happy to take it. We may accidentally miss you, not intentionally, yep. but it just sometimes happens. Like, mm. or I, I guess my question from there would then be like, if that's you and that's the yep. type of person you are and you're kind of a bit mousy and don't want to get out there and like... What's a good way of well, maybe I, a follow-up text straight after saying, look, thanks for your time. I really liked yeah, that. I really yeah. liked the place. Yep. Um, sorry I didn't get a chance to talk to you. Stay but, um, yeah, can you mm. please let me know what's happening with the place? Yeah. Mm. Maybe so just... Make an impression in a different way, but yeah. if it's not in person straight away, just... Exactly right. Mm. It doesn't have to be in person, but as long as you relay that information back to us so we are aware that you do have interest, mm. I think then that's going to put you in a better position. A- yep. Actually, that's a really good point because my personality is I'm much more inclined just to go straight up to the person and start... Ch- you know, oh, we know. But my, my, <laughs> my partner's like the complete opposite. Yeah. So I'd feel much more comfortable through a text message. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the idea that you can um, yeah, make yourself memorable by sending the text message beforehand to say, I'm looking forward to the open home. Um, and then that follow up after is great because you've got those two points of reference. But what you're really trying to search for is information because, you know, in the point of negotiation, information is king. So if you, you know, some key elements are, you know, you know, why are the owner selling? What's the time frame? What's their urgency? Um, what are their expectations? Um, the, you know, what um, you can sometimes just ask the agent, look, if, if, a, if, a, if a price was to be presented today that the owners accept, where would that have to be? Um, so you're just constantly fishing for more information. Do they know anything about the easements of the property or the title or um, and getting a, nuances? And asking for a copy of the easement and title. If they yes. don't have it there at the open home to provide to you there and then, yep. ask for it to be emailed through to you later that day so you can review it before you're put in a pressure position to make an offer. Yeah, yeah. So well, and, that, and that I know when... Um, when you are talking about, um, you know, making an offer finally, well, all those little terms make a difference because if you know that, you know, the owners are looking for, look, it's really important that they could have a, a stronger contract in a shorter period of time, you might say, well, look, um, you know, you're intending to wait 120 days, but you might go, well, look, if we really, really want this property, let's sharpen up our clauses ahead of the game um, so that you are becoming a much more, much more competitive. It's, um these questions that you described, John, and they're quite interesting. Obviously, I just sold my place last week mm. and um, one of the buyers that came through was exactly that, asking all those type of questions, wanting to know what we were doing, where we're going. My dad was explaining that we're going to rent for 12, 18 months while we build. Yep. And straight away he was like, well, I have a house. It's not ideal, but does it help if I offer to rent the house back to them to continue living there for 12 months. Jeez, that's get, interesting. Yeah. yeah, so for him... He, his house or you rent your house back? Rent our house back. Okay. So he was yep. looking for a, a leverage point to potentially make his offer 
looked Stronger. a little bit more appealing. Yeah. So if it meant he had to wait a year to get into it, he was prepared to do it because he had another home that he could keep and he was going to rent that out once he moved into ours. Mm, so, right. But he wouldn't have known that without asking those, those, those questions. questions. So yeah, yeah. sometimes, you know, it's not all about always about price or conditions that win you a contract. Sometimes you can get creative and and find a solution to potentially a vendor's problem yeah. that then puts you in a better position to, to secure a property. That's a brilliant way of phrasing it, actually. You're trying to find the vendor's problem. Yeah. Because ultimately, whenever we're moving, we are solving some form of problem. Yeah. Uh, be it downsizing, upsizing, where offload, you know, they're offloading another property, they're under financial stress. Um, and if you can discover their problem, you can be part of the solution to help solve that. Mm. Um, and by identifying yourself with the agent, or sometimes it could be a private owner in that case, um, and be likeable. Don't be a douche. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it's amazing how important that can be just to be likeable. You don't have to be like super charming or anything, but just don't be a douche. So um, I think everyone can appreciate I think that. I found this week's sound grab for the... <laughs> don't be a douche. Don't be a <laughs> douche. Well, I, I think that particular yeah. person came through multiple ones of our open homes on the weekend. Victorian license plate. I think he offered 100 to 150 under the asking price on about oh, six properties last yeah, weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... It was you know, just, we just, we just, he was a hero um, <laughs> and, and, he, and he wasn't securing a property. Uh, and you just politely just say, look, it's, you know, unfortunately it's not going to be acceptable. And then you might say, how about I introduce you to a property that you can afford? Um, which you know, we didn't get a chance to say that, but I'm really disappointed that I didn't. <laughs> well, you, you just said it to him now. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. You, you showed him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's a classic case where um, we, we, do, we absolutely have rela- relationships with buyers that will actually say, look, if it's presented with a, an offer that's like a, a property, um, let, give me a call, I'll buy it. You know, it could be an extremely distressful situation for an owner and they need an out within 48 hours. We have clients that would be prepared to accept properties and buy in any market. Mm. Um, but they're good people that we've got great relationships with. Now, there's nothing stopping him with being a buyer like that who has relationships who could be a distressed buyer for really stressful situations. Yeah. Unfortunately, the way he conducted himself was like, we're never going to speak to him again. <laughs> you know, So it's because you don't want to work with people like that. Jeez, yeah. I hope he's a listener. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> you're out there. Well, if you're wondering, it's you or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, but it's again, it's a poor strategy if you're hoping to secure a property at a at a bargain price. All complaints go to John at four one four dot com. All right, well, well, our section. It, mm. Probably he should have list if he listens to this episode, he might learn just like don't a few of the good questions don't and don't be, don't be a douche. Don't be a douche. <laughs> Last <laughs> bit, um, talking about um, solving problems is kind of the tenanted property and what that kind of entails for an open home. Can we kind of just? Quickly touch on that before we um, finish up. Oh, sure, I can. I think inevitably for a, there's a, that my word again. Um, the for a tenant, it's a stressful situation because they don't nine times out of ten go, don't get any benefit out of the process of having to display their home while the property is for sale. Sure. With that said, though, is that if um, if the if they're prepared to work with the company and work with the owner and everyone can strike a reasonable balance, um, it'll actually make sure that the process is as stressless as possible. And to keep that good relationship working, we want to get in, we want to get out. We don't want, we don't want to be showing the property a thousand times either. Um, and we want to introduce it to someone good who will either hopefully take it on or, you know, if you work with us, we'll help you find, a, you know, your next your next property as well. So um, for me, uh, as, a, as a tenant who's actually been through that experience as well, is that um, I'll, always, I'll always presented the property as a means is that, you know, I'd be happy for it to display it in sale. Yep. Um, no, only because when it was purchased by an, in, by an investor, they instantly renewed the lease and we got it for below market rent because they knew we were great tenants. Sure. Um, so that's sort of my sort of take and it would be, well, you know, uh, everyone's different, but, you know, make it make it easy for everyone. Mm. Um, it, it, the process will be over quickly if you make it easier for others. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, we understand the pain points that as a tenant has and we don't like selling rental mm. properties when there's tenants involved no, because we understand no. that's not fair for them. Exactly. So we're not here to make it difficult for a tenant either. So I think what we've had a lot of success with is sitting down with tenants and explaining the process early and talking to them yep. and finding a solution that they're happy with that we can work with. So, um, you know, if you are going through that experience where, you know, your property manager just rang you up and said, hey, um, you know, the house is going to go on the market and an agent will reach out to you soon – Ask to have a sit down with them. Ask to fully understand what the situation is and how you know we can make it better. 
maybe there's agents out there that will work with you and say, if you give us an open home on Saturday, we'll try to work any private inspections only to be on it, you know, a day that works for you. And maybe that's Wednesdays, for instance. Like, Absolutely. Yep. So yep. there might be flexibility there to minimise the impact if you negotiate a little bit with the, the potential selling agent. Yeah, I guess the strength of an open home in this case is kind of, yeah, look, let's try and get as Everyone many people through, through on this through. time so that we're not disrupting your life um, through the week and we're not kind of doing anything. We'll try and get everyone through. And you might be a case too. We say, look, um, this time is, is not good. I'll, um, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable about, you know, too many people coming through. More than happy for you to do that, but could you please ensure you've got two agents there mm. so I feel safe about my property. So, again, you're trying to give a little bit of give and take. Um, and, you know, I'd, I've never had anything stolen, you know, touch wood in any of my open homes in my career. But it does happen, you know, and if that's something that you're uncomfortable with, just just straight up say that and find help, have the agency find a solution that makes you feel comfortable. Was that a Rosehaven episode? I feel yes. like there was an yeah, episode. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, uh, well, and that was based off a, um, a true story from a friend of ours where um, the someone had um, – a, a boy got to the house and there was a fishbowl on – Yeah, that's one. Um, yeah, in, in there. And it, 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 I think they were either hated the fish or they felt that it was under underfed. And so – a buyer has got out a knife, which is weird in itself, and then inscribed onto the bedside table, I will care for your fish. <laughs> and this actually happened. <laughs> you know, so, and then obviously they you know, spun that in the show, but that was a mate of mine in Victoria where that actually happened to. So um, yeah. they're out there. So moral of the story, if you're a tenant, don't let hope and homes happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or make sure your fish is well cared for, so <laughs> otherwise you, you know, they don't feel like they need to take over your job. They're you. coming for you. Yeah. Um, all right, boys. I think that's probably a point to jump off there. Just yeah, the key takeaways are: don't be a douche and um, feed your fish. So feed your fish. just a classic episode of the property <laughs> pod where you're getting all the really fun facts and Day stuff that mate. you need to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, look, open homes. Um, yeah, they're an important part of the industry. They seem to be um, happening a lot more now that the days on market have extended out. So yeah, mm. I've learnt that today, um, and I'll know next time I'm driving around and seeing all the signs that. That could be a sign of why this is happening. Absolutely. So thanks for educating me. Thanks for letting us know all about the movie The Rock also, John. (laughs) Have you seen it? (laughs) I have seen it. It's very good. But I'm going to give you some homework, John. Yeah. You should watch this movie called Jurassic Park this week. Really? That is a top notch. (laughs) Based on a true story. (laughs) And we're out. All right, guys. See ya. You have been listening to The Property Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek then use their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of this information without first seeking qualified and professional advice.